Welcome to the Scarlet Monastery Dungeon Guide for both Horde and Alliance. This guide will cover each wing of the dungeon most players have the fondest memories of. I'd personally recommend doing Graveyard and Library together, and Armory and Cathedral together in the interest of saving time and to be most efficient when doing quests and obtaining gear. Besides amazing looking items and lore, the Scarlet Monastery also offers a good amount of cloth and excellent XP for time invested. The recommended levels for Graveyard and Library are 29 to 34, with a majority of the quests stemming in Library, and 36 to 39 for Armory and Cathedral, but you can enter all of the dungeons as early as level 21. Let's jump right into our quests. As Horde, at level 25, we can start the chain Test of Faith and Thousand Needles from Doran Plainstalker. This chain has 10 parts, so just keep doing it until you're sent to Undercity to collect Test of Lore from Parkel Fentalos. This quest requires us to collect a book called Beginnings of the Undead Threat from the Library. In Thunderbluff, we can pick up Compendium of the Fallen from Sage Truthseeker at level 28. This quest also requires a book from the library and is shareable. From Apothecary Farinel, if we completed Going Going Guano covered in the Razor Fen Crawl Dungeon Guide, we can pick up Hearts of Zeal, which requires 20 hearts dropped by any of the Crusaders in the dungeon. This quest is obtainable at level 30. Our main quest, End of the Monastery, can be picked up at level 33 from Verimothris in Undercity. It just requires us to kill a boss from every wing of the Scarlet Monastery. This quest is shareable. Our final quest can be picked up from within the dungeon at level 25. In the first chamber of Graveyard, we can pick up Varel's Revenge from Varel. This quest requires us to kill Interrogator Vicious's wife to take back Varel's ring. Nancy Vicious can be found on the east side of Lordaeron Lake. Don't take her lightly, she's an elite that does quite a bit of damage. Some classes can solo her, but I'd recommend doing this as a group. Wait to engage her as there's another elite in the house. She does eventually patrol to the dock. Upon collecting the ring, we can turn the quest into Terran Mill to Monica and Guts. As Alliance, at level 28, we can pick up Mythology of the Titans from May Pale Dust and the Hall of Explorers of Ironforge. This quest requires a book found within the library. This quest is shareable. Our final quest starts at Nigel's Point in Desolus. At level 34, from Brother Anton, we can pick up Down the Scarlet Path, which requires us to kill 30 undead ravagers in southern Desolus. Upon completion, Anton sends us to speak with Rayleigh the Devout in South Shore, Hillsbred Foothills. Rayleigh gives us a quest requiring us to kill four various bosses in the different wings of the monastery. Starting things off with the graveyard, the first boss we can encounter is Interrogator Vicious. He's not too worrisome. His weapon does a bit of extra fire damage, and he casts the occasional Shadow Word Pain, but that's about it. Nothing to really worry about. Our next three bosses are all rares. The first being Iron Spine. Iron Spine is incredibly easy. He casts Curse of Weakness and has a Poison Cloud, but past that he just swings his hammer, so enjoy your free loot. In the first tomb we can see to the right, we can encounter Ashir the Sleepless. He's also fairly easy, but watch out as he can fear you into other mobs. Past his fear, he just uses Drain Life. If you can interrupt it, do so, but it's not really the end of the world if you don't. Our final rare, the Fallen Champion found in the tomb to the left, is your average warrior mob. Like the other rares, nothing to really worry about. All three rares drop great loot, so people farm graveyard just for them. Our final boss in the graveyards is Thalnos. Thalnos does quite a bit of AoE with this Flame Spike and Fire Nova, so range should keep their distance. Try and stay spread out to avoid dying. Otherwise, he just casts Shadow Bolts. With his death, we can move on to the library. In the library, the first boss we encounter is Houndmaster Loxy. Loxy himself isn't too difficult, but his swarm of hyenas can make him a challenge. Try and focus the hounds down first, as Loxy gives him a 30% haste buff. Loxy himself is not threatening, and he even drops an awesome toy that summons hyenas that anyone can use. The final boss of the library, Doan, can be quite a challenge if you don't follow mechanics. Range needs to stay as far back as possible, as Doan specializes in AoE. He casts the occasional arcane blast, and does an AoE silence that can cause a wipe if the healer isn't prepared. If Doan yells burn in righteous fire, run for your life unless you can take an 800 damage hit. Doan also has a mana shield that can be purged, and will sheep random party members. 
Once you've killed Doan, make sure you loot his crate to obtain a key for the remainder of the dungeons. Moving on to the armory, we encounter our first, last, and only boss in the final chamber. This fight is fairly simple, as long as you follow mechanics. Herod cleaves, but this can be healed through. His main ability is a whirlwind that makes him immune for 10 seconds. Flee from him during this period, as he will do bursts of damage every 2 seconds. Upon his death, a horde of Scarlet Disciples will flood the room. AoE them down, but don't underestimate them. Lastly, we can enter the final wing, the Cathedral. In the back right, once you enter the chapel, we can click on this torch on the wall to access a chamber with a hidden boss. This boss Fairbanks is an easy kill, but his loot is subpar, so he's skippable. In terms of abilities, all he does is cast a curse that increases damage taken, but that's it. Otherwise, he's another easy boss. Make sure you clear out all the mobs in the chapel before confronting Mogreen, or they will all chain hold. Mogreen himself doesn't do too much, but he does hit quite hard. Upon Mograine's death, White Mane will come out. White Mane herself just casts Holy Smites, but at 50%, she will sleep the whole group. While the group sleeps, she resurrects Mograine, then heals herself the full. Healers should try and conserve their mana up to this point. Past this, the fight just repeats. Focus down Mograine, and then move on to White Mane. And that's about it. Hopefully you got some awesome loot out of this, and I hope you enjoyed the dungeon as much as I did. Otherwise, enjoy, and have a great day.